we're the last generation kind of plugged in to analog or unplugged from technology and running analog. And when you think about that, our entire childhood and, and our development was on analog. Yeah. So we didn't have all these data inputs, these algorithms controlling behavior. And there's something to be said about that because it's almost like an old world and a new world. No, it's crazy. It's, isn't it crazy, man? I know my wife yeah. and I try not to talk about it around our kids, like because it, it comes out like, oh man, these kids today, uh, they don't have. They, I feel sorry for them almost. Oh, you do, you know. So we can't really let them, you know. We don't want them to just have this, like, oh, why are mom and dad always talking about what a bummer it is to grow up today? That sucks, you know. Yeah. So yeah. we try not to talk about it around them, but we think about it. That's for sure. And we talk about it when we grab a glass of wine at the end of the night and sit down on the couch because we have such great memories growing up and we grew yeah. up during the same time. But for us, you know, all those shows that had a theme song that you could you could spit right out and then had some sort of a vehicle that was like a character in yeah, the show. A plot. It was uh, General Lee or it was Knight Rider, the A Team Van, Starchkey and Hutch so car. Amazing. You know, all of that, you know, Miami Vice the, the Fall Guy. Ferrari's Fall Guy's truck, which was awesome, that, by the that way. That was bad. It was it well it was a it was GMC. A, the GMC, mm -hmm. the brown one. So great. So on gold with that big eagle on the Oh God! Hood. We should. I want to get that. Yeah, I've owned that for a long time. Somebody, somebody has that somewhere. So, a lot of people have recreated it. Like you can go online yeah. and look in images because uh, I've done this, and uh, so a lot of people have them out there. Just have like made their own and have it in their barn or their garage yeah. or whatever else. But the original one that they actually jumped. I don't know how many they had. They must have had a few because they did some pretty sweet. They destroyed jumps. those things, and it was not wasn't CGI. Like they sent that thing no, it flying. Was real. It yeah. was like a person inside of it. And when it jumps over that portion, the I think it's a portion in the oh. beginning of the theme song. It like jumps over that thing. So yeah, the Fall Guy was awesome. Yeah, yeah, Fall Guy is like a sleeper one because not a lot of people remember the Fall Guy. Ooh, I do. I think about it daily. Me too. Much. Me too. And it was during that time also where all of a sudden everybody started having a background in Vietnam. And I'm not sure with the Fall Guy like where that came in, but they have a Return to Vietnam episode in the Fall yeah. Guy. Yeah. So Magnum did it, of course. Magnum did the return to Vietnam. Mm. Um, so did the Fall Guy. They saw, the A Team did it. A Team, um, of course. So yeah. they saw all those shows started to be like, oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, it was like the '80s, like that was what you did because you had to prove, I'm mean, not prove, but these skills had to come from somewhere. Yes. You know, for these guys, like, they oh, were where was that? that? Oh, Vietnam. You know, that's that's the that's place that makes sense. So yeah, all of them. Were. And, and Simon you, and Simon, all you know, even the Simon. merchandising AJ. of GI Joe, like GI Joe. Remember the cards oh. in GI Joe? Oh yes, I have a huge collection of GI Joes. Have, do you? Do you, are they out of the like? Do you have the in cards box still? And out of box and cards. I have the cards that I cut out, and I was just thinking about this recently because I gave them to my daughter when we were still in Coronado in the SEAL team, so a decade ago. Yeah, and uh, they're somewhere. I don't know when one of these moves. Where yeah. they are, but I had all of my ones from a kid that I would I cut out of the box Same. with like the kitchen scissors. You know, I got Snake Eyes, I have Duke, I have all those guys, Dutch, I, got, I have all their cards. And they I were all Vietnam era oh, yeah. experiences. Because otherwise, you know, how are you gonna where else those? they come from? Exactly. exactly. Well, the, I mean, the original GI Joes. And from, from World War Two. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. For yeah. some reason, I thought it was late 60s, like the doll one. I had one of the big ones before yeah. they kind of, whatever you did back then, reinvented or relaunched uh, in the, like the early 80s, probably around 83 time frame yeah. with memory serves. They came out with the smaller figures, like the Star Wars type figures, yep. plastic ones. But before that, in... 70s late 60s i think they had the doll version they did and so I, he had the beard the whole thing Maybe yeah. that's where my beard thing comes from because i was a little ahead of the time with the beard were you yeah so 95 before i went to the seal teams went to alaska um spent about three months up in alaska and came back with big old beard long hair it was awesome yeah. but nobody else had beards back then so like you walked into a store people were like you know, you got the looks. Yeah, you, like this bearded guy. man. I looked like, yeah, you, I did look like a homeless person though, because I had like, <laughs> you know, the the. Uh, Your beard grows in pretty grizzly. Especially, yeah, yeah, it was, and it was, yeah, it does. And uh, I had the army surplus green pants, you know, OGs, like leather jacket, a flannel, and wow. this big old beard, you know. I'm thinking Rambo. I already had my CCW. I was training. I was training with these uh, uh, SF guys. How from old were Vietnam. you? Uh, so that's like 1920, 21, somewhere in there. Pre seal. Pre seal. Yeah, yeah. Same. I had the same experience. So when I lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, I went to ninjutsu school. Nice. And all of the guys who trained me in Fayetteville were all SF guys. Nice. And I remember the ninjutsu school. Ninjutsu school. Were they capitalizing on the ninja craze of the 80s? They were. Um, they were, but they also on the teams, because all of them were like seventh group. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if they were third. I remember them all being like mostly seventh group guys. And I remember them all culturally... Um, 
they lived it, man. They lived the dojo lifestyle. I think it, the dude's name is Steven, Steven something. He's like one of the first guys who brought Japanese jujitsu or ninjutsu. Oh, the guy, he's like America. in Ohio, right? Yeah, he's got the um, mustache. Yeah, uh, I'm going to think of his name in a second. But yeah, yeah. It, he was awesome in the magazines in magazines, the 80s. Magazines, books. Oh, it was great. So he had a lot of videotapes that I had. All the, the video whole thing. series. He started the whole like Kung Fu magazine and all this culture around Shuriken. Shuriken. Mm-hmm. No, and I'm mean, will know about Shuriken. Man, that's old school. Yeah, I know. You must be qualified. <laughs> um, I, he, this here's one thing is um, so my mom. We didn't have a lot of money at the time, but my mom knew I wanted to be in martial arts. I had taken a little taekwondo, and I'm oh, like, yeah. this is boring. You know, it's like kata. Yeah, you're doing the katas, the discipline, the Olympic stuff. And my mom's friends, who are Korean, owned the dojos. I said I wanted to do something else, so I I showed Rang Do. Hua Rang Do, yeah. See? Oh, man. Did I you know. take Taekwondo? I did. Yeah, well, I, yeah that was... That's, I, right. that's a lot of people's entry point. You 100%. Know? Because you can go to the yellow, could go to the yellow pages back yes. then and be like, oh, here's one that's semi-close. Yeah. I'm going to go there, <laughs> the you know? But then, <laughs> But then I did that, too. And then very, very quickly, I realized that, you know, because I'm watching... That's like yeah. Mike Tyson time frame. So I'm watching those. Yes. I'm watching the older fights when you could find them, like on ESPN yeah. 2 or whatever may have been, whatever. Yeah. Late night fights where they'd show some Muhammad Ali stuff or maybe a documentary, that sort of yeah. a thing. And I'm like, why, why are their hands not here? Why are they protecting this jaw? Why is their yeah. elbow? Why is their elbow in? Why are, why are they moving in a different way than I'm seeing yeah. here at the Taekwondo school where I'm like doing my kata, I know, I know. know. And then why are you like not like you flipping your foot and you're just like touching the guy? Ah, it's like soccer. Yeah, like, ah, you're like oh that didn't hurt. That hurt. It was <laughs> like a point. But um, when I went to ninjutsu, I realized quickly that these guys were different. I mean, mm. I I remember them almost separating my shoulder. Um, during demonstrations because they would say, Hey, can I get a demonstrator? And I would come forward cause I'd volunteer. I was 15 years old at the time. And they were like trying to break me in half. And I'm like, nice. well, this is violent. Nice. And I kind of was introduced to violence that way. And, and I remember one time my mom brought me out and she brought me out and they said, Hey, uh, cause this is Fayetteville, Fort Bragg. They gave a location, which is like an intersection that you had to meet at. And then they get instructions from there. And we we're in the tank trails. And we show up in this group, and I get out of the car, and they had different works, sh- different stations set up. One of the stations were shurikens. They were throwing out like a piece of plywood. One of the stations was climbing trees using claws oh. and like the ninjutsu foot things. I might still have those. Yeah. I think I have them too. I padded them. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Because remember, it was just like oh, it was metal. Like metal. Yeah. yeah. And you so could like I hurt took, somebody. I found some foam. And I cut it, oh. and then I taped it to the inside with like electrical tape, Smart. so your hand would go in and would. Gri- I, I found those not too long ago. Oh my gosh, movies. they're still around here somewhere. Yeah, that's yeah. from like a couple years ago when you were yeah. doing training. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the greatest thing was, um, my mom is like, "Oh, what is this? This is weird." And <laughs> and there's there's one of the workshops or the stations were century assassination, century takeout. Nice. And so by the book and protocol, they were doing how to step, approach, heel to toe, really soft steps, come up, stay narrow, stay slim, and then work your hands and then and taking a wooden katana because they were doing nice. the inert. And <laughs> I like that. Not, oh, yeah. Not base of the skulls of the right of the spine. There was a little bit of that, too. Nice. That was good stuff. It was pretty. Uncommon yeah. Valor. We learned a lot in the 80s Ooh. from movies and oh. magazines and TV shows. Yeah. You know, with the, oh, gosh, I remember the exact line. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I think he says, base this close to the right of the spine and what the Japanese call the wind gate. You insert, scramble the brains, Ooh. and what you have left is just ragdoll. The wind oh. gate. And then he drops them. That's interesting. Someone will correct me on that. But that's pretty close for off the cuff. That is not close. not having seen that for a long time. Like, that's pretty dang close. Do you think that, do you think there's something to, because I felt like as a child when I, you know, had a inert MP5 that was mm. battery operated, that was a water gun, Ooh, that's and simple. I used electrical tape and I, I literally planned operations as a 12 year old kid with neighborhood kids, low crawling through the area, thinking I was like Carlos Hathcock in the middle of the Vietnam oh, yeah. war with a BB gun. Do you think that that training for us was rehearsals to make us good soldiers, sailors, Absolutely. military? Per- yeah, and oh, they yeah. don't get that now. Absolutely was, um, but you had to work for it a little bit back then. Um, like finding the Charles Henderson book on Carlos Hathcock and then reading, yeah. reading that book. And then what is it? Marine to, sniper, Marine sniper. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite book. And, uh, then thinking about, wait a sec, what he's doing this shot with a 50 cal. And you're thinking about 50 cals that maybe you saw maybe in a world war two movie, probably at the time and thinking, we, how did you do this? 
with that. Ooh, and then you're, yeah. cause you have to picture it in your head. Cause you can't just go like, Oh, let me look this up. Dun, 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 and then images pops up. No, you had to like kind of figure it out and then go to another book, maybe go to like uh, an encyclopedia. And you had to like follow the clues to try to figure out, you know, a lot of these things that are being described to you in these novels or books. Um, and then be like, Oh, what is that? Okay. Okay. Cause you're picturing it in your head, but then you had the Mac Bolan books, uh, in my case, and those mm. had all these weapon descriptions and a sketch of these weapons in, in each one. I was a yeah. member of the Mac Bolan fan club. So I get, like every month it was or two months or something it was like two mac bowen books an able team a phoenix force and kind of like one extra i think kind of thrown in there um posters with all the weapons on them and all that sort of a, a thing so i think that really did help and from that um remember you could get you know the, the guns that we're talking about that uh, looked pretty real yeah uh, back, they oh looked yeah pretty legit and true was, color schemes really yeah wooden stuff it, on yeah it. there were some really good ones oh back gosh. in the day you know now they're all crazy different colors i know my buddy tried to order something for his son in california from amazon wouldn't do it and it was like it was like purple and orange and green and couldn't couldn't do it couldn't get it wouldn't deliver to california when i when i was 10 my dad bought me one we were we were poor living in an apartment complex it was just me and him and when i was 10 years old he bought me one present the only present i wanted and it was a AK-47. And the AK-47 looked exactly like the real thing. Yeah. And it had an RPG adapter. And when you pull the trigger, because it's battery operated, it went, it went semi-auto, full auto, or shot the RPG. And I remember, I don't know the circumstance, but I remember I got that and I, I cherished it. And I was on the playground playing with it. And imagine like today, rural Daytona Beach, Florida, at the time, I remember a conversation taking place with some lady and my dad, but I was out in the playground, like shooting all my playmates with an AK-47, like the only Asian kid in my neighborhood running around with an AK-47 in the 80s on a playground, like just looking like a real AK-47 with a magazine and everything. And then my dad saying something like, hey son, um, yeah, let's, don't go to the playground with that thing anymore. Like, what? why? Like, well, it's, it kind of looks real and you, I don't want you like running around shooting kids you don't know because, you know, they, they, they said something and I'm like, okay, dad, like no big deal. So that was the time and those are the things that we dealt with, which is amazing. What an yeah. amazing Yeah, no, it was great. Those pistols looked, I mean, I still remember to this day that there was a, a 1911 that looked, I mean, I can picture it in my head right now. It was all solid color, like black or, you know, actually one was brown. We had so, we had a lot. We had a yeah. lot of weapons. Access to Gr a lot. Yeah. Toys R Us had a whole oh, so aisle of like realistic guns. And no one thought anything of it. It was Nobody. like fantastic. Yeah, um, grenades, oh, RPGs, knives. There just looking at all that stuff like, oh. oh and sometimes man. I'd get to choose one. Ooh. And I remember one was like, uh, not like the Henry survival rifle. It was like a pistol that had like a buttstock that you could attach to it. Mm. And then a suppressor that would go on the end. And I, so I'd take that because it was like rifle-ish at that point to a little kid in like fifth grade. And uh, and I put on some tiger stripes or some whatever, or black and tiger stripes. And I would burn um, the end of a uh, cork or my wine bottle Ooh. and then put that on uh, on my face and everything. And then go up in the hills and set up a hide site, you know, behind the house and just observe, you know. Maybe we should cut that out. That's sounds <laughs> I did the same <laughs> exact thing, man. But I think that helps. I mean, that, that, yeah. that helps. Um, that was our vision you know? board. We didn't have the ability to access imagery. We were creating our own vision boards. Yeah. 